We ran into a problem with the uh, switching supply on an LCD monitor here a couple weeks back and couldn't find out what the problem was and got out the data sheet for the um, PD PWM controller on it and found a couple of Zener diodes that was part of the circuit and got out my little power supply that I have and did a test on it and found that one of them was actually bad, it wasn't regulating like it should and we replaced that Zener diode and everything's functional from here on out. Originally when that when we got that monitor it had the typical electrolytic capacitors bulged at the top with change in capacity and um, ESR through the roof so more than likely it must have been maybe a pretty high surge that took out the weaker link which was a Zener diode or who knows what's what happened but it checked okay with an ohmmeter I mean you just do like a regular diode test with it but it wouldn't regulate correctly so we just put a new one in there and everything powered up and it worked just fine so it got me thinking I had to build a quick simple Zener diode tester and started um, thinking about how to do it and going through data sheets and this is what I come up with um, this is nothing earth shattering if you look on the web there's probably a hundred people that have done a very similar um, circuit to this basically you just take the LM317 and turn it into a um, fixed current source and inject a voltage into it and hook the Zener diode up to the output and it should regulate to the correct Zener voltage. Now one problem I did run into in this I've got the uh, current set too low for most of the Zener diodes that you're going to be using. I did it on purpose or mainly to test, thing, to test this thing out see how it was going to work I think what I'll modify this later on at some point with maybe a rotary switch and several different resistances. This is set up right now for about five and a half milliamps test current. And I'm finding that when you get into the lower um, Zener diode voltages, that's just not enough test current to make them operate reliably. So if you look on some of the uh, data sheets, for Zener diode you will see say for example a 4.3 volt 1 in 4731A they use a test current of 58 milliamps for that and I found that anything below about 6 or 7 volts this tester just there's not enough test current to make the Zener diode um, regulate the way that it should and I'll demonstrate a few here later on but I know I have a 4731 that only gives me Zener voltage somewhere around three and a half volts and I don't believe the Zener diode itself is bad I just think that there's not enough test current to do it so I'm going to probably make this circuit variable now that I know that it works and I've tested a bunch of diodes I'm going to put a selector switch in there with say four or five different test currents so I can get a little bit closer to that Zener test current and test them a little bit more reliably. But anyways, here's the little tester. It didn't take me really any time at all to build this thing. It took me longer to find an enclosure to put it in. And I didn't really have anything big enough. So I eventually just found a little computer power supply and yanked the guts out of it. And that's how I did it but extremely simple. Just got your AC voltage in and of course do a fuse and an on off switch to the primary of the transformer. This transformer has several different outputs on it. I've had it laying around forever so I figured I'd just use the 24 volt output on it. I'd have liked to have used a 
36 volt but once you rectify that and everything it would be too high for a LM317 I might get a 317 high, high voltage at some point and modify this to where I could use it for a high low voltage system but use the 24 volt and just just tie it right into there nothing more than a bridge rectifier circuit and a big filter capacitor and a 317 and then the resistor to set the fixed current and I included a little test button probably isn't necessarily needed but when I hook the zener diode up to it hit the test button get the reading and let go of it one mistake I did make um, I put a 1k resistor in line with the LED and it just barely lights you can hardly see it I should have maybe gone with like half that maybe like 470 ohm or something like that but it's not that critical. That's just something I added. I didn't necessarily need to add, but you've got your test leads here for the Zener under test. Red goes to the banded side, black to the other side, and then rather than spend the money on a meter, I just model a couple of regular DMM test leads on there, and I just use my standard digital multimeter. the voltage set the auto ranging up for volts DC we're good to go so I've got a selection of different zener diodes here that we can test already got that on got these here they're 4738A's which has a typical voltage of 8.2 volts so I'll kind of step this back a little bit so you can see a little more of the hookup and then from there on out I'll just uh, put the camera on the meter hook it up and then push the button and that gives you your test voltage so I get this set this up here in front of the multimeter looks like I've got a glare on that Let's see if I can't get rid of that glare maybe I'll shut my top light off that might help So these are 8.2 volt typical and if you look at the data sheet for this particular Zener diode, the 1N4738 typical 4738 is 8.2, minimum 7.79, maximum 8.61. So we're right about 8 volts for that one. And again, the test current for these 8.2 volts should be around 31 milliamps, and I'm only testing them at five, five and a half or so. So I'm not sure how accurate these are going to be, although they've all tested within spec. I tested these earlier. They seem to be all within spec. Seven point nine four, that was a little bit lower. Still within spec though, we can go down to what 7.79, 8.02. So, really, overall, for an approximate 8 volt Zener diode, this 5 milliamp test current seems to work pretty well. Although, I'm a little bit afraid that if I have a suspect one, only testing at 5 milliamps may not show problems at the higher current levels it may regulate at say five and a half amps but not at say fifty or I mean five and a half milliamps but not at fifty milliamps. See they're all right in the area of eight volts. So those 
all test good. Of course they ought to, they're brand new, but you'd never know. You can have bad ones from the factory. Okay, the next one up, and I only have one of these, is a 1N4731A. It's also brand new, and these are good quality ones. These are old stock from Motorola, so I would have to assume that they're all good quality. But this one here doesn't test real good. Now the nominal voltage on it is 4.3 volt. If you look at the data sheet, oh, uh, let's see, 4.085 is the minimum, 4.515 is the maximum. But it should be tested at 58 milliamps, which I'm only testing at five and a half milliamps. Now, uh, which see, we're way low on that. So I don't think there's enough test current to get that one to actually produce that knee that is characteristic for the breakdown of a zener diode. So that's that's an area where I would need to have a higher test current I believe. Now the next ones I have up here are 22 volt typical and if we look on the data sheet 1N4748A 22 typical 20.9 min 23.1 max and even them at 22 volts typical the test current should be 11 and a half amp uh, milliamps I keep saying amps <laughs> but um and we're only using five and a half but they actually oh, better turn it on they test within spec I must have shut that off at some point I didn't even realize it <laughs> Twenty two point zero nine. So those are all pretty close to right on, but then again we are closer to that test current with these, so they should. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that, those at all. And I better go back to this four point three volt. I must have reached over and flipped that switch off for some reason after I did the first batch of zener diodes. So I remember testing that earlier and it wasn't that far off. Of course there was res residual voltage in that um, filter capacitor that was doing the test but regardless okay this is at 4.3 volt again see it's still out of spec 3.625 and for the 4.3 about 4.085 is where it ought to be I thought that seemed awful low the first time because I tested that before and I said it was about three and a half volts or a little more but yeah but still regardless the test current needs to be higher than five and a half milliamps in order to test a zener that low. So I just thought I'd demonstrate this. I'm gonna, now that I tested the concept, and you know, like I said, you can go on the internet and Google LM317 zener diode tester, and you're gonna find a hundred of them look almost identical to what I just built, so it's nothing earth shattering. But one thing I can't do is I can't test anything over maybe like a 28 volt zener. This thing puts out about 32 volts, so I don't think anything more than about 28 volts or so, or whatever the standard zener voltage would be in that area. Yeah, 27 volt zener diode is a, probably the highest standard diode I'd be able to test. The next one's a 30. I don't know if it would regulate correctly with only two volts over it may. I don't have any to test it with. But I've got a whole pile over here that are 75 volt zeners that I can't test and I noticed now that I've done a little bit of research on these switching supplies there are some higher voltage zeners in there so I'm gonna probably at some point make a different tester have this one here for the lower voltages and then the other one for higher voltages and then I can test the higher volt zener diodes a little bit more reliably but I just thought I'd show you my latest little project here and I'll probably be you'll probably be seeing more videos on this for really cheap stuff to do rather than more expensive stuff 
So I decided um, I'm going to put this 347 probably on hold. I might do a short video on that later. We ended up probably having quite a bit higher expenses for college this year than what we we're expecting for the one boy. He's fast tracking his education. He'll have his bachelor's degree in three years instead of four, and he's going for his master's starting next year. So, um, probably about twice as much money we're putting out this year as what we thought we were going to have to. So, I'm going to probably maybe put a halt to the racing engine thing for a little while until I see how, how things shake out on that. So, you'll be seeing probably a little bit more electronics related stuff instead because this is all cheap to build and you know like this tester here I had almost all the parts ready my parts been ready to go so and I just thought I'd show